you know, I come from a Latina household. My mother is from Guatemala and my father, he is Puerto Rican. And so I have six brothers and one sister. Alhamdulillah. Um, we were raised in a Christian household. Um, my mom, she was, um, she came here at a very young age. And my father, unfortunately, he ended up leaving us when I was five years old. So my mother, you know, she struggled as a single mother. Um, and so through all her endeavors and hardships, we got connected through the church. So the church, you know, really helped us try to find ourselves through life. They were very giving. You know, I went through a lot of obstacles trying to figure out the spirituality of it. So, you know, something that I realized throughout, the, you know, me being involved at the church was that um, there was a little bit of a disconnection when it came to understanding the spiritual aspect of it. And I see some of you, you know, nodding your head, yeah, because a lot of times what we read in the book is not what's being portrayed. There's a little disconnection there. And so, you know, then that becomes where we start to feel a little bit you know, depressed and sad, and we're trying to get answers and we can't find them. And so alhamdulillah, you know, um, you know, throughout my years, I was just, you know, in going through dark paths, you know, trying to find myself. I ended up being Catholic. So I went from Christianity, then I went into being Catholic. And then again, here we go, still that disconnection. I'm reading something, but it's not adding up, right? And so you know, I was like, okay, I'm just going to take a break a little bit, you know, from religion and just try to find my way in the world. Well, that doesn't work out either because now I'm walking blindly. At least I had a little something to hold on to, you know. So and then I was like, okay. So I, at the, I was around 17 years old where um, I went off to college. I moved down south and, um, you know, I, my brother at the time, he ended up calling me and he goes, um, he goes, Elena, you know, I want you to know that I became a Muslim. This was like my mentor in life. And uh, honestly, I ended up really being upset. It was a disappointment to me. I felt like he betrayed something that we, you know, didn't know of. It was like shocking to me. And I actually ended up disowning him because of it. I didn't want anything to do with him. So I went a whole year without talking to my brother. I still, you know, spoke to my mother. I still called her. I checked on her. And, um, and I would kind of ask about him. And he would tell me, oh, um, he stopped going out. He stopped hanging out with these people. He stopped, you know, doing these things. And I was like, oh, that's good. I don't want to know anything about him. You know, it was just my stubborn ways. And, um, and so one day she tells me, you know, Esby, so we end up, his name is Esby, but we ended up calling him Abdurrahman after he took his shahada. That was his, like his new name. Um, so he says, Esby, he went to this place where they had a box. And it was a black box. It ended up being Umrah. He went to the Kaaba. And so I go, really? What's the Kaaba? You know, it just kind of made me realize, like, why do you have to go across the world in order to get some type of spiritual connection or what. So I started to wonder a little bit. And during this time, I said, you know, maybe I should, maybe I should go and read about Islam instead of me being, um, you know, negative and just being judgmental about it. And so I went to the, so back then, this is 25 years ago. Can you imagine? We didn't have any social media. We didn't have all the technology we have today. It was literally us going into the library, and we had to research everything on the computer. And so I started to, um, you know, read books and read about the science behind, you know, Islam. And one of the books that really, really touched my heart was this book that was called "What Is Islam About" by Yahya Ermerik, and it goes into like all the scientific reasoning behind why things happen. And I, and I really sat there and I said, oh my God, you know, like I started to cry a lot. And I was just like, is this just for real? You know, this is what I've been asking my whole life. You know, I couldn't believe the whole Trinity thing. Why do we have to go through this person to get to God? And this was like, I can actually feel connected to God alone 
So that was one thing that really hit me when, when I decided to take that, that leap was the fact that a lot of these churches didn't explain to me or they felt like I only could get connected to him through them, through going to the Sunday or talking to, that was the only connection. Now here Islam, you have that self-reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anywhere you are. You can pray wherever you want. And for me, that was freeing. That's me being spiritually free and connected to him wherever I was. And I was like, oh my goodness, is this really, is this how it is? And so alhamdulillah, you know, so at the age of 18, I decided to take my shahada. And honestly, it was the greatest day of my life.